Chapter 618 Challenging the Beast God, the White Tiger Duke agreed, and became the Saolua Empire's new ruler. Xu Jiawei put down the blade in his hands as he helped the White Tiger Duke to his feet. He heaved a sigh of relief and said, I can finally rest a little. I will immediately issue a royal decree and announce this to the world. What happens next is up to you, but you have to make me a duke. Our little exchange is quite interesting, is it not? Dai Hao stared at Xu Jiawei, whose face was brimming with chirpiness. Xu Jiawei was truly happy because he had sustained too much pressure over the years as the Saolua Empire's emperor. The enemy had retreated, and he was relinquishing all his responsibility, so he felt a lot younger than before. We need to settle things between us before you deal with other matters. Who are you? Our voice rang out. Dai Hao turned around and stared at Who are you? with a complicated look, and his three sons did the same. Dai Luo Lai took a few quick steps forward and came before Who are you? as he explained. Brother, a faint smile finally appeared on Who are you? face. Dai Luo Lai was much taller and bigger than before, and his soul power undulations went weak. He was a soul emperor now, close to becoming a soul sage. Who are you? could see Dai Luo Lai's growth over the years. Who are you? gave him a hug and said, "You have to continue working hard." Yes. Dai Luo Lai nodded excitedly. Dai Hao glanced at Dai Luo Lai suspiciously. Luo Lai, you knew that he. Dai Luo Lai no longer needed to hide anything anymore as he nodded and answered, "Father, the teacher I have been talking about is my older brother." Ah. Oh. Dai Hao's eyes widened with astonishment. He could clearly remember that the person that Dai Luo Lai had referred to as his teacher had saved his own life more than once. So, so he's always been trying to protect me. And I, as his father, didn't even know about such an outstanding son. You Al. Dai Hao closed his eyes painfully. He knew that he owed this son of his far too much. Dai Yuheng and Dai Huobin's wore strange expressions on their faces. Dai Yuheng's expression was a little better because he didn't belong to Huo Yuao's generation in the first place. But Dai Huobin's expression was incredibly strange as he seemed to recall something from his past, especially about how things were like when he was still a child. Huo Yuao said plainly, "Follow me, everyone." He waved his hand as he spoke, and a layer of golden light rose up that encompassed all four of them. Golden light surged into the sky and traveled out of Star Luo City into the distance. Where are you taking us, brother? Dai Luo Lai could tell that there was something wrong in the atmosphere as he whispered to Huo Yuao. Huo Yuao replied, "The Duke's Mansion." Dai Luo Lai was momentarily stunned. Right at this moment, Dai Huobin suddenly hollered from the back, "If you wish to seek revenge, Huo Yuao, seek revenge on me." Huo Yuao's body froze as he spun around and stared at Dai Huobin. Dai Huobin wasn't afraid at all as he gazed into Huo Yuao's shocked but icy eyes. "I remember now. You're that little fellow from all those years ago. So you're still alive." Dai Huobin said coldly. Smack. Dai Hao suddenly turned around and slapped Dai Huobin across the face. Dai Hao was furious as he roared, "You knew. You knew that he existed. Does this mean that I'm the only one in the mansion who didn't know about this son of mine?" Dai Huobin fell to the ground, and he no longer stood up as he knelt on the ground. He lowered his head and said nothing. Dai Hao looked up and turned towards Dai Yuheng as he roared once more, "Speak. Did you know?" Dai Yuheng forced a laugh as he went down on his knees. Of course he knew, since even Dai Huobin, who was a lot younger than he was, knew. How could he not know? Back then, he went missing not long after Aunt Yun's death. Father, I say no more. Dai Hao kicked him to the ground. Dai Hao was such a strong and resilient individual, but tears flowed uncontrollably down his face in this moment. Yuna, I've let you down. I've let our son down, too. I am a commander and a hero in others' eyes, but I am an unforgivable asshole and a jerk before you. Who are you? I turned back around and said nothing, and neither did he look at Dai Hao as he quietly controlled the golden light and continued flying. The White Tiger Duke's mansion was located close to Star Luo City, but Who are you? I was stunned when he arrived. The White Tiger Duke's mansion had always been so magnificent and grand, but it had become a pile of rubble now. Who are you? I extended his spiritual detection. The vast White Tiger Duke's mansion had become nothing but rubble. Not even a single complete brick remained. Dai Hao forced a laugh and said, "I was the War God Empress' number one enemy. She has vented her fury onto this place a long time ago, so nothing remains." Who are you? body trembled vigorously as he suddenly looked up. The golden light accelerated and suddenly descended towards a certain direction. They were moving very quickly, and everything around them became a blur. Fear. Dai Hao could feel fear coming from his son at a time like this. He's afraid. What is he afraid of? Dai Hao stared at Huo Yuao in surprise. Yes, Huo Yuao was afraid, because he thought of a possibility, something that would make him live with regret for the rest of his life. That place finally came into view. Huo Yuao swept over it with his spiritual detection, and his body swayed a little before his tense emotions finally relaxed. They descended from the sky onto that place. They were at a grave that had been renovated very well. It was lonely, but fiercely independent. Huo Yuao was afraid because he was afraid that his mother's grave had been destroyed like the White Tiger Duke's mansion was. Dai Hao's name was on this gravestone after all, and Huo Yuao would never forgive Ju if that happened. But he could see that this gravestone was fortunate. There were no traces of armies or soldiers, like there was a force in the nether protecting this place. Huo Yuao went down on his knees before the gravestone as he spoke with a quivering voice. I'm here to see you, mother. I'm here. Dai Yuheng and Dai Huobin were on their knees in the first place, and they both looked up subconsciously at the gravestone. Dai Yuheng heaved a sigh, but Dai Huobin's lips were tightly pursed as his body continued trembling while tears flowed from his eyes. Dai Luo Lai knelt down next to Huo Yuao and cowed out towards the gravestone. The White Tiger Duke was the only one who was still standing, but he was sobbing uncontrollably at this point. I've let you down, Yuna. I didn't even know that you'd given me a son. Huo Yuao continued kneeling as his voice turned incredibly cold. There are still many things that you don't know about. The Duchess mistreated my mother, and the two of us were treated worse than servants. I've asked my mother before, when can I stop being hungry? I can still deeply remember the pain on my mother's face. My mother placed baked biscuits into her clothes for me so that I could enjoy a warm baked biscuit, but she burned herself in the process. My mother has passed away, but even in the moment right before her death, I never saw a thread of regret in her eyes. I don't understand what it is about you that is worthy of her love. You were the one who had brought all the pain in my mother's life. You're a good commander to Star Luo City, but you're a horrible husband. There was no anger in Huo Yuao's voice. There was only iciness. However, his body still trembled continuously. He had been waiting for this day for far too long. Huo Yuao had returned, even though he wasn't a duke, and he didn't have that exalted and noble title. He was entirely worthy of realizing the promise that he had made all those years ago. I've been very resentful. I hated the Duchess, and I hated Dai Huodin, who had hurt my mother. But my hate gradually dampened afterwards because my mother didn't have to take the pain that they had given her. At the bottom of it all, she suffered all that because she fell in love with you. My mother had to go through all that pain because of you. Dai Hao seemed a little lost as he stepped before the gravestone. His stiff knees gradually started bending as he finally went down on his knees. Yes, you're right. Everything is my fault. I couldn't give her happiness, but I still chose to be together with her, and I ended up giving her a life. Yes, everything is my fault. You Al, I know you were resentful, and I am too embarrassed for you to call me your father, but can you allow me to leave for another year so that I can arrange matters and affairs within the empire before I retire, build a house, and live in this place? I will finally be free when that happens, and I can accompany your mother every day so that I can speak to her and repent. And when I die, if you allow it, and if you believe that I am worthy, I will bury myself here to accompany her. If there is a next life, I will give everything I have to love her. Who are you Al's eyes were no longer cold. Dai Hao's words touched his tenderest heart strings. Of course he knew what his mother had hoped for the
Everyone has to die at some point. He suddenly felt very relaxed in this moment, and he felt it deep in his heart as the heavy stone that had weighed on his heart for all these years crumbled just like that. It's over. Yes, everything is over. My hatred and revenge have been resolved. Dai Hao stared at Huo Yuao with a complicated look in his eyes. What do you plan to do next, child? Huo Yuao replied, Our matters here have been settled, and I have accomplished everything that I wanted to. The Sun Moon Empire will definitely not go back on their way this time. Furthermore, we still have that level of connection between us. Xu Jiao Wei has abdicated his throne to you, and that is an absolutely excellent move. Even though I can't say that the Star Luo Empire won't run into any trouble within a thousand years, there shouldn't be a war within a hundred years. The Star Luo Empire will be fine if it continues developing steadily. There are still some things I have to do. Will you return? The White Tiger Duke asked. Huo Yuao shook his head. I don't think so. I'm going to a faraway place. Dai Hao heaved a sigh. I know that I'm not worthy of you calling me your father, but I still have to say, take care, my son. If someday you find yourself too tired and fatigued outside, then come home. Who are you as body shook as Dai Hao addressed him as son, and the last thread of hate in his eyes disappeared. Who are you as stared at his mother's gravestone, and his mother's smile suddenly surfaced in his mind, like his mother was staring at him with hope brimming in her eyes. Father. The gentle word emerged from Huo Yuao's mouth. The white tiger duke quivered. He stared at Huo Yuao in disbelief. Then he suddenly opened his arms as he took Huo Yuao into his embrace. Yes. This is my son. Huo Yuao didn't address Dai Hao's father because of him, but because he knew that that was what his mother wanted most. He would do anything so that his mother could be happy. You can leave. I wish to accompany my mother for a few moments more. Huo Yuao muttered softly. The duke let go of Huo Yuao and turned towards the gravestone as he said gently, Wait for me, you know. I will be back soon to accompany you. I'll return everything that I owe you for the rest of my life. Brother. Dai Luo Lai exclaimed. Dai Yuan stood up as he pulled Dai Huo into his feet. Dai Yuan walked up to Huo Yuao and patted him on the shoulder. Dai Huo walked over as he gazed at Huo Yuao with a complicated look for a long while. He was struggling as he said, I'm sorry. A forced smile appeared at the corner of Huo Yuao's mouth. My mother cannot be revived no matter what, and neither can your mother. Let bygones be bygones. Forget it. Forget it. It was so difficult for Huo Yuao to those two words, but he finally said them in the end. He finally and completely liberated himself of all his hate and resentment. The Star Luo Empire's new emperor, Dai Hao, left with his three sons. Huo Yuao was the only one left in front of the gravestone. Huo Yuao knelt down in front of his mother's grave, and a faint smile appeared on his face. That's what you want to see, don't you, mother? You're so kind-hearted, and I've done it. I finally brought him back to your side. He will be here to accompany you in the future, and you no longer have to feel so lonely. I really miss you, mother. If only you had still been alive. Huo Yuao muttered as he knelt in front of his mother's gravestone like that. Time continued to pass, and he remained on his knees for a day and a night, which passed in the blink of an eye. Faint golden light condensed behind him and gradually took shape. Have you dealt with everything? A gentle voice jolted Huo Yuao awake from his memories of his mother. He looked up, and what he saw was a familiar face. It's you. Huo Yuao stood up and bowed respectfully at the golden haired youth behind him. The god of emotions, Ron Ambing, smiled faintly as he said, I have found out about your affairs. Seems like you're not in a particularly good mood. Huo Yuao forced a laugh and replied, I've done everything that I ought to, but I suddenly have a son out of nowhere, and Wutong has left my side. I don't even know where she is. Ron Ambing asked, Then what plans do you have? Huo Yuao's eyes suddenly grew resolute. I have to search for her, and I have to bring her back to my side no matter what price I have to pay. Please take me to the god realm, because she must be there. Do you know where she is? Who exactly is Wutong's father? Ron Ambing answered, Nobody can take you to the god realm, not even I can. You'll have to rely on your own strength if you wish to go to the god realm, not some external aid. There's one more test that you haven't completed if you wish to inherit my spot. You have to become the strongest individual in the Duluo continent. As for your future father-in-law, I will tell you when you officially take over my seat in the god realm. Who are you as eyes moved? You're talking about the beast god. Rong Niabing tilted his head slightly, and his body slowly became faint and illusory as he disappeared into a million golden specks of light. Go, you can inherit my seat in the moment when you defeat the beast god. Thought spun in Who are you as head as he remained rooted to the ground, and a faint smile slowly appeared on his face. Rong Niabing didn't mention it, but Who are you could tell that he was acquainted with his future father-in-law from his words. That meant that as long as he could reach the god realm, searching for Wutong wouldn't be that difficult. The beast god, Dutian, is it finally time for us to fight? Intense belligerence and fighting spirit radiated from Who are you as eyes. He could only find Tang Wutong if he defeated the beast god, and nobody would stop his passage to the god realm. Who are you turned back around and knelt down in front of his mother's grave once more. Mother, I'm going to find your daughter-in-law. I will bring her to see you once I find her. Who are you out a few more times before he got to his and flew towards Salu City. Celebratory spirits permeated the city. Who are you our spiritual detection easily covered the entire city, and he searched for the people that he wanted to find. He quickly found where the Tang Sex individuals were located. Who are you our broke through space as he appeared in front of his companions? Who are you our was about to leave, and he had to bid his farewells to his companions, and to Ellison. You're leaving? Bei Bei stared at Huo Yuao, and his eyes were filled with yearning and longing. They hadn't seen each other for three years, and Huo Yuao was finally back. Yet he was going to leave once more. Huo Yuao wore a gentle smile on his face as he stared at Bei Bei. Don't worry, eldest senior brother, we will return when I find Wutong. I want to conduct our marriage at the Tang Set, inside Shrek City. Our happiness cannot be complete without your blessings. Bei Bei, he came to, and Shu Sanchi laughed heartily as they heard his words. Then what are you waiting for? Hurry and bring her back. Otherwise, don't come back. Jang Nan and Chime Dinner, she laughed. Yes, definitely. Huo Yuao left Star City once more as he said goodbye to his companions. Huo Yuao didn't leave right away as he rose into the sky and he turned around and gazed in the Sun Moon Empire's direction. They should be on their way back. Yunnan, little Yunnan, a thread of lamentation flowed through his heart. Juzi, oh Juzi. I don't know how to face you anymore. Perhaps fate and destiny have played us after all. You're right. I am not worthy of being Yanan's father. He belongs to you. He's your son. Huo Yuao shook his head forcefully as he tossed away all the distracting thoughts at the back of his mind as he soared into the sky and raced towards the Great Stardo Forest. The rubble that was the White Tiger Duke's mansion outside Star Luo City was cleared, and a ceremonial altar was erected. Xu Jiao Wei announced to the world that he would abdicate his throne to the White Tiger Duke. Dai Hao, Xu Jiao Wei was appointed as a crown duke, and he began building his own residence where the White Tiger Duke's mansion used to be after the ceremony. Dai Hao took over as emperor, and he made Dai Luo Lai crown princes Dai Yuheng and Dai Huobin also became princes. He made his beloved wife, Huo Yun, who had passed away, empress, while he appointed the spirit Ice Duo, Huo Yuao, as the imperial tutor. Shrek City removed their lockdown, and Shrek Academy started enrolling students once more. The Tang Sect expanded their Soul Hall's research structure, while Ikei took over as the Soul Hall's master. Sun Wen entered Shrek Academy and became the Soul Department's dean, while Ma took over as the Marshall Soul Department's dean. Ellison passed his position as master of the Sea Gods Pavilion Tian Shaosh, and he went back to his wonderful days of enjoying beautiful wine and delicious chicken thighs. The spirit Ice Duo, who are you, Al, was named the Sea God Pavilion's honorary master. Three months later, the Sun Moon Empire's armies had completely
Four simple words became like tidal waves of consciousness as they traveled into the great Stardo forest. Who are you as consciousness traversed the entire forest, and that frightening spiritual will cause all the soul beasts to tremble fearfully, including a hundred thousand year soul beasts. Inside the great Stardo forest's core region, at the lake of life, an enormous head suddenly emerged from the bluish green lake water as water rippled and splashed in all directions, and dense life energy permeated the air. The creature's large golden eyes gradually opened, and a gigantic frame gradually rose through the air. You're finally here. I've waited for you for a long, long time. A deep voice resonated in the heavens, and waves of sound rolled through the air as the great Stardo forest's skies began to contort. The sky's color slowly changed, as the originally radiant sunlight was immediately covered by dark clouds. Who are you out hovered in midair, and he was unmovable against the dark clouds over bearingness. I have also waited for this day for a long, long time. Who are you out stared towards a certain direction calmly? A pillar of smoke and mist rose from that direction. It was just a tiny sphere in the beginning, but the smoke swiftly magnified like an enormous smoke dragon rising into the sky. The lively great Stardo forest became completely quiet in this moment, and not a single sound could be heard. Clouds and smoke condensed as the beast god, DTN appeared. DTN's long hair was draped over his shoulders, and he placed his hands behind his back as he appeared before Who are you out just like that. DTN's deep eyes were trained on Who are you out's body. He stared at this unassuming youth, and he nodded slightly. I knew that this day would come when I didn't capture you on that fateful day. I just didn't expect it to come so quickly. The power of destiny has covered everything about you. I searched for you for over a year, but wasn't able to find a single trace. You dare seek me out today, so you must have some level of confidence. Who are you? Asked smiled faintly as he stared back at the beast god. They were like old friends who hadn't seen each other for a long time. And who are you? Answered. You're like a towering mountain before me, and I will never reach the pinnacle if I don't cross it. Btn smiled coldly and said, "Then we shall see if I'll keep the great Stardo Forest destiny behind, or if you'll step over me to search for your god realm." Who are you? I wasn't surprised that Btn knew about his pursuit of the god realm. The beast god wouldn't be known as such if he couldn't feel who are you? intentions. Up. Btn growled as he took a step forward. Silver light flickered, and he disappeared into the air. Who are you? Asked smiled faintly, and he also stepped into space with a single step. Battles between individuals of their level were a lot simpler, but more dangerous than anything else. The originally clear skies darkened almost instantaneously. Dim light rays portrayed a strangely beautiful picture, and there wasn't any pressure at all. Instead, the skies appeared to be sublimating in some exalted fashion. Two beams of silver light emerged through these dark clouds almost at the same time as Who are you? And Btn appeared ten thousand meters above the ground at the same time. Not even tidal billow could reach such an altitude. The air at this altitude was at extremely low temperatures and also extremely thin. There were also vigorous gales blowing through the skies. Normal living beings appearing at this altitude would immediately be ground to dust and obliterated. However, Who are you? And Btn looked like they were stepping on level ground as they appeared, and nothing seemed to change. Furthermore, the distance between them was identical to back when they had first met each other above the great Stardo forest. DT nodded in who are you as direction. I haven't had such fighting spirit like I am feeling today, and nobody has challenged me for many years. The truth is, I'm very lonely. Who are you as said, I can feel that your yearning towards life isn't that strong. Why? Dtn smiled faintly and replied, You wouldn't ask me that question if you've lived for a few hundred thousand years. I'm familiar with every speck of dust within the Great Stardo Forest, and I've seen every detail that has happened in the world. I am already sick and tired of this place. It is duty that has kept me here so that I cannot leave. Otherwise, I would rather use my future life to pursue new and mystical things. Oh, what is considered new and mystical to the beast god? Who are you? I asked a little curiously. A look of yearning appeared in Dtn's eyes. I wish to pursue worlds outside the Dulua continent. I traveled the world when I was younger, and did you know that our world is a giant sphere? If you fly in a single direction, you will ultimately circle back to where you started. The ocean takes up most of our world, and there are barely a few patches of land. The Dulua continent is the most advanced one, in addition to the Sun Moon continent that came afterwards. Of course, only the Dulua continent remains, and the Sun Moon continent is no more. I was born in the Dulua continent, so I am happy to see this result. Who are you? I stared at him in astonishment. Our world is round? Dtn nodded and said, Yes. Furthermore, all the stars that we can see every night are all spheres, including the Sun and the Moon. Dtn was like an intellectual who had accumulated his knowledge over a hundred thousand years in this moment. Therefore, I wish to see other planets and stars aside from our own. I've already attempted to fly even higher. The pressure and restriction and the air decrease after you reach a certain altitude, but there is a barrier in place. You can only search for other worlds if you break through that barrier. I don't know if I can accomplish that in my lifetime, but I do wish to try. Perhaps that barrier is what the God Realm has restricted our world with. If I can break through that barrier, perhaps I will have a chance to enter the God Realm. I can almost feel that the God Realm is likely to exist on another star, perhaps one that exists above and superior to us. That place can master more powers and mystical things. Why didn't you try? Who are you? I asked curiously. Dtn shook his head and replied, I can't. Life and death are terrifying things, but death is nothing to me. However, I'm not just living for myself. I have to protect the Great Stardo Forest, and I have to protect the dragon's last pure bloodlines. Therefore, I cannot take that risk because I have to stay alive. Even if I have to stay alive, alone and lonely. Frankly speaking, your appearance has given me a pleasant surprise. I have seen what other humans do not have on you, and there hasn't been anyone across tens of thousands of years who has been able to break through into the God Realm by relying on his own strength, and to ultimately obtain the God Realm's approval. And you finally have this opportunity. If not for the fact that you carry the Great Stardo Forest destiny, I would almost be willing to help you, in the hopes that you can return in the future and tell me what you've seen on the other side. That would be most meaningful for me. Unfortunately, you have fused with the three-eyed golden lion, and this means that we can only be on opposite ends. I will not kill you, and if I can defeat you today, I will seal your way and keep you in the Great Stardo Forest. With your current cultivation rank and physical strength, you will have no problem surviving for a thousand years. Furthermore, I will use the Lake of Life's water to nourish your body and find some way for you to reproduce. Then, I will use your descendants to pass on the power of destiny. I will find a hundred thousand year soul beast to be your wife, so that your descendants will possess a soul beast's characteristics, and your descendants can live even longer, while your power of destiny will always be passed on to your descendants. I will kill you when that happens, and I will fuse your skull of destiny into your descendants who possess a soul beast's characteristics. His long life and fusion with the power of destiny will undoubtedly guarantee the Great Stardo Forest's peace and safety. I've contemplated this for a long time, and I feel that dealing with this in this fashion will achieve the best result. Dtn was speaking very seriously, like he had already dealt with this matter. Who are you? Our expression didn't change, and he listened quietly to Dtn speech. The stronger you become, the lonelier you get. The beast god is living an unhappy life after all, and he can't even pursue the things he wishes to. However, I have a lot of respect for you. You hold on to this life because you're bound by duty, and that is enough to earn my respect. Who are you out bowed faintly in DTN's direction as he spoke to show his respect? Who are you out gradually straightened his body after his bow, and his eyes began to change along with his posture. His calm eyes suddenly grew bright, and they were filled with incredibly sharp luster. But everything you've planned is based on a single prerequisite. You have to defeat me. Who are you as voice traveled far into the distance, and those sound waves tore a gap through the dark clouds. Radiant sunlight shone upon the great earth once more, and onto who are you as body such that his entire frame turned golden. DTN nodded and answered, Yes, I have to defeat you. Then, let's begin. DTN slowly raised his right hand as he spoke and pointed his palm in who are you are direction. Who are you are made the same action and raised his right hand.